Hey, okay, so let's make a video so you guys have something to watch on Monday, unlike usual. Um, so we're going to start chapter 23. Uh, 23 is, it's not so much that it's super complicated, it's just that it has some new stuff going on, like some like really kind of new uh, grammar going on. And so that's why I justify taking a review week. So hopefully you, got, you guys are doing a lot or feeling a lot more comfortable with the passive voice and perfect voice or perfect tense rather see i get them mixed up too uh and perfect passive verbs as well um so we're going to learn chapter 23 uh we're going to practice it you guys are going to get kind of like the in class version of this on tuesday so it'll kind of be a reiteration but honestly because this is kind of complex that sounds like a good use of time honestly uh wednesday in class we will be checking the homework so you guys will probably see that on thursday unless i make it ahead of time or something and then maybe i can check in with you guys in class towards the end of the week and i'll get y'all to take a chapter 23 vocab quiz on the same day apparently as um uh, as uh, the the kids in third period, but um, you guys will play Jeopardy with the 1.5 kids on Thursday probably. Uh, okay, so let's see. This is just some review stuff. Um, here we go. This is the grammar for this chapter. It is all about these things called participles. A lot of these participles, and when I say a lot, I mean two of them out of four. There's like four different flavors of this participle. Two of them are derived from that fourth principal part that we've just started to recently use in the perfect passive verb forms. Um, it's not a bad principal part because it usually looks pretty much like the first two. You can see with this one, ago agra, eggy octum. Octum, it might remind you of the uh, first two principal parts, um, but uh, this one's actually a little more different than, than many are. Uh, but usually they look like the first two principal parts and then they have like a T towards the end and they can kind of end in any first or second declension ending. But so these participles, we have four of them, as you can see, I'm just, it's the same chart uh, above and below. I just, uh, I'm, I'm like talking about how to form them on the one below and then actually forming them on the one above. So we have a present active participle. And now what a participle is, I should probably probably explain, it's when we take a verb and we make it into something that is much more like an adjective. So it's like a verbal adjective, sometimes a noun, but for right now it's gonna be kind of like an adjective for us. And so this would be like if I say, you know, like the man runs, we're Koreans, versus the running man. Uh, well, I just used the participle form on accident line, but that would be weird, Karain's the running man. That has taken the verb run and it made it into an adjective. So it's not that the man is running or will run or anything. It's not that he's verbing. It's just that he's running. And in that context, running is an adjective. It's not a verb. So that's the present active participle, the one you see to the upper left there. That's when we take a verb, and this is actually going to come from just the second principle part, and then we add an ns to it, and uh, and it becomes the a verbing form of the verb. Um, but again, it's kind of like an adjective. So if you look at the example below, Karen's weir est fortis, the running man is brave. Uh, there it is modifying weir. So it is uh, that's what it would look like in its nominative singular form. They do decline a little bit. They decline as though they are third declension nouns. Uh, so this is what it would look like if you like go down. Um, Agains would be like running subject. Agentis would be like of the running possessive noun. Agenti, 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 etc. Um, they're actually kind of like I stem, third declension nouns. If you look at that ablative ending in long I or E and the nominative plural and accusative plural. Well, it looks like the nominative plural can end in I-A or E-S, depending on if it's going with a masculine fem for the former or a neuter for the latter. So yeah, you'll look at examples of that. And the way you, the way you really kind of uh, are going to spot this is by looking at this. So in the nominative singular, it's, you're going to look at that N-S or look for that N-S to know it's present active, whereas in all the other forms, you're looking for the N-T. And that N-T should hopefully remind you of like the word present. Um, 
So that is the indicator that you're looking at a present active participle. It's like literally just those two sequences of letters, usually in T, unless it's nominative, and then it'll be in S. So that's it. That's what you have to go on. It's like hopefully the first part of the verb you will recognize as like coming from a certain verb that you know, hopefully. And then the ending will look kind of like one of these. And um, mostly the NT will be the thing that is giving it away. And yeah, we just translate it as verbing. That's about it, verbing. Uh, but again, it's like, it's like an adjective kind of verbing. It's not like the man is verbing. It's that it's the running man. And then there's like, there will be like another, like a, an actual verb. Because again, these are verbal adjectives. That's why, that's what a participle means, verbal adjectives. The second kind we have is the present passive participle. This is going to come from the fourth principle part of the verb. And you can see over here. So it's like, if you're looking at this chart, we do not have present passive participles. We don't have perfect active participles. Uh, so there's like some, some kind of gaps here, uh, which is good, right? We don't have like six types of participles. We just have four. Uh, and the perfect passive one is taken from that fourth principle part. And then it, it's not going to get a sum essay form next to it. Because that would make it just a perfect passive verb, like uh, I have been verbed or it has been done, octus est. It's not going to get that sum essay. It's just going to show up uh, without a sum essay. So it'll just be one word and uh, it'll, it'll basically translate to like having been done. Um, but you often won't need the having been part. Uh, so for something like ago agora, it would literally just translate to kind of like done, like the, 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 or maybe spent, sometimes ago can be spent, like the spent um, money, pecuniam octum would be the spent money. But in our example down here, datum, donum, est, amatum, we have two perfect passive participles. It'll take you guys a little while to get used to recognizing them, just like you have gotten used to, or having, have had to get, uh, get used to uh, recognizing the uh, perfect passive verbs. But datum is from, what verb do you think? It's from do dare, right? Do dare, dedi datum. Uh, and then uh, amo amare, I'm sure you can recognize from uh, amo, or I just gave it away. Uh, amatum is from amo amare. And, uh, but yeah, so again, this kind of goes back to like, if you know your vocab really well, um, this is an issue because back in the day when we first got a lot of our verbs, I would tell you guys to ignore the second principle parts, uh, the second or the third and the fourth principle part. But um, uh, hopefully that could, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're gonna start drilling fourth principle parts. That's like, a, I've, I said that last week and like, let's do it this week. It's a really good idea. Hopefully I can find a Quizlet deck that's like pretty made for me or something. But anyway, so this would be what? It looks like it's going with donum. So it's the what kind of gift? It's the, ooh, anyone? The given gift is what this is going to be, is, amatum, is loved. Um, so, like, we, I guess we could, like, stretch this out and say, like, the gift, comma, having been given, comma, is loved or whatever. But we can just, we don't necessarily always need the having been. You can always kind of, you can kind of just get the, 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 the verbed version of the verb, and you just, like, stick it right next to the noun it's going with, and that's usually good enough. Um... There might be a few exceptions to that, but, but yeah, so we have present active where it's like the verbing subject. And then we have what the, and my keynote just crashed. I don't know why. Uh, did I have like some transition happening in those slides? And, Cause usually that's, that's when it's crashed in the past. If I have like a, um, like a weird uh, animation. Okay, I will pull it back up. These are the homework, uh, or these are the, the sentences we're gonna look at this week. I'm gonna have you guys do one through five, and then we might do six through 10 in class on Monday and Tuesday. So if we don't get to it in this video, we'll get to it in the next one. Okay, here it is again. Let's hope it doesn't crap, crash. So yeah, um, present passive, the verbing, subject and then perfect passive the verbed subject or it doesn't have to go with a, a nominative subject it can go with uh, really any kind of noun uh, all right and then we have our third kind out of four so we have a future active participle and a future passive participle they are both going to be more rare than the first two we went over the first two we went over are what you're going to be mostly seeing but okay so 
This one is formed again off of the fourth principal part of the verb, in this case, octum from ago, agra, eggy, octum. And then you kind of squeeze in this U, R, uh, in between the stem part of the participle and whatever your first and second declension ending needs to be to go with the noun it's modifying. So in this case, it'd be like octorus. So the way to spot this is just like with present active, you're looking for the NS or the NT. With future active, you're looking for this UR, and it's like the UR in the word future. Um, and so this will translate to like about to verb or going to verb, which can sometimes sound a bit awkward. Uh, and I think that's kind of why the textbook doesn't uh, force it on us too, too much. It's a little more rare. But so I look, I already translated this one because I don't think people would be able to uh, get it without saying an example first. So Greiki now tied means the Greek, Greek sailors. And then it's set off in commas for us, which is nice because uh, it feels like it should be. But visori, um, that probably would look super foreign to you, but it is from video videri, we see we some. So that's one of those fourth principle parts that does not look a ton like the first two. It's like the D is absent altogether and we have an S instead. So that was kind of weird. That's why we're gonna drill fourth principle parts this week. So the Greek sailors about to see Polyphemus. So just like the, well, similarly to the present active, the present active won't always do this, but this one, I guess kind of will, uh, there will be like a direct object that is the object of this, right? Like about to see, about to verb, the direct object, which in, in this case is Polyphemus, the Cyclops. And then, and then we still have a main verb, are afraid, or they, they fear, the Greek sailors fear, but are afraid is better. Uh, yeah, and so you are, as you see in the lower right, is the way to spot that. Um, it's weird, I like mixed up the slide. And then we have, last but not least, the future passive. You guys are not really gonna see this one at all too much. We'll talk about this one more in like chapter, I think it's 25. But uh, the, the key here is to spot this in D. There's a fancy grammatical term for this future passive participle. It is the gerundive, which comes from gero, gerera, like to carry. Um, and uh, the word gerundive has that in D in the middle, just like these future passive forms will as well. And so this is formed from the second principal part, and we kind of just add that in D, os, a, um, ending. And this is more like uh, about to be done or must be done. And we'll, we'll learn about this thing called the passive paraphrastic, but we'll get to that eventually. So that is the, the fourth kind. So with all of these, there's kind of, a, well, at least, I guess all of them, but perfect passive. There's like a two letter long sequence of letters that helps you identify it. With present active, it's NS or NT. With future active, it's UR. With future passive, it's ND. And then perfect passive doesn't really have one. That just relies on you hopefully being able to recognize that you're looking at a fourth principal part. And uh, let's see, so patrum in casa videntes. What does that come from? Let me see real quick. Um, not one of these, just in case. Well, if that is your homework for next week, it's fine. But so patrum in casa videntes, something about a father in the house. Um, what is this? Uh, oh, okay. So, but patrum is not our subject, right? Uh, so he's like a direct object. If we look at Wedentes, hopefully you can already kind of realize that that is our present active participle right there. Um, it's from Video of Dairy. That one should be really easy to spot, uh, unlike the uh, fourth principal part. So it's present active. So it's something like seeing, uh, but it's not. It's like it's not the father seeing something because he's direct object. So if it was him, it would have to be. What would it be? It'd be. Um, N T E N, like it'd be, yeah, it would end in E-M because pater is their declension. So it end, if it was like the father saying something, it would need to be the same case as the father. If anything, this looks nominative plural or accusative plural, but I'm, I'm guessing the former nominative plural. And then, so let's keep moving. What is our actual subject? Oh, it's the girl and the boy. That's the subject. And then something about to him, they ran, the perfect tense ran. So this would translate to uh, the girl and the boy, um, and the word order is kind of different, but like seeing the father in the house uh, ran to him. And so there's a lot of different options for word order. But uh, but if we kind of take the first part, 
uh, first, it would just be like seeing the father in the house, like actively verbing the, the direct object in the house. The subjects ran to him. So this honestly is like kind of a slightly more complicated example, but um, Greike, so we already looked at this one. Oh, well, this is actually different for, this is like an example we just saw, except with a perfect passive participle instead of a future active one. So this is like the Greek sailors. Are they already giving you ablative absolutes? That's crazy. Uh, the Greek sailors were afraid if we just kind of skip the middle part and VC a uh, polyphemo, Oh, I see. Okay. So VC, uh, polyphemo, VC here, like we kind of saw earlier, is that slightly hard to recognize fourth principle part of video videri. So that'd be like the Greek sailors having been verbed, in this case, having been seen by polyphemus, they are afraid. And again, word order is kind of flexible here. Um, you can even add since or when in some cases, like since they had been verbed, uh, the Greek sailors are afraid. <clears throat> so yeah, as you can see, this is like potentially kind of confusing. And just like with perfect passive verbs, perfect passive participles can also have a ablative of agent along with them. Um, all right, I think this is y'all's homework. Let's do like one or two more for now and yeah, I'll let y'all like try to work on your homework for a little while, which again, it's gonna be these first five. But if we look at number six here, Illa Femina Fortunata, that's easy. That fortunate woman. And then something about um, these plans against, against something, right? Contras against, against those evil uh, quantum, what is that? That's just like uh, um, once. Um, so that, let's like try to put this together. That fortunate woman, skip, 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 nourished or once nourished. Um, those evil, or no, I'm sorry, just those plans against uh, those evil men, since we don't actually, yeah, we're just going to translate this as like those men, it's those evil men, uh, and uh, was working um, uh, for the sake of Kausa, was, was always working for the sake of the common health. That has no participles in it. Cool. Um, let's look at, this one's really long. What's one with a good that's weird. Sometimes a chapter will introduce a new grammar concept and then like half of the sentences won't even have that grammar concept in said sentence, which like none of those do. That's crazy. Okay. Um, oppresso. Mm, nope. That one's not good either. All right. I might, might make a part two to, to this where I go over the sentences, but for now I will cap this one off and I'm assuming there will be a part two. But if not, you guys can work on homework until the end and review the vocabulary for this chapter, which is, where is it? It shows up eventually. But yeah, sorry, I do not have better prepared sentences than the ones I showed you, but these are the, the vocab words for, for this uh, chapter. So you will be quizzed on them on Friday. Some good ones though, Arx, Citadel, Dux Leader, which looks like Duca Ducra, Aquas' Horse, I've seen that before a lot, Hosta, Spear, Insula Island, so on and so forth. Um, we have one adjective, Magnanimous, which is like brave, it's almost like Magnus. And then we have uh, a bunch of verbs that they're gonna be playing around with uh, in, their, in terms of um, forming participles out of them. All right, I will stop for now, maybe add to this, maybe not, not sure, but Thanks for being um, uh, computer or laptop kids. Um, I appreciate it. All right, thanks.